but we don't have uh, the PowerPoint slides. I hope it's okay. We'll just uh, we'll just talk. That's fine. Okay, so um, we are group three, and we had to read uh, uh, chapter four along with the other with the first, sixth, and seventh chapters. And uh, I will make a short summary of our, our review. Um, so the first thing we wanted to say is that we found the topic of the book really, really relevant and really timely, especially because most of us in our group are working on energy issues. And, and sometimes when you look at these issues, especially in terms of your own sector, then you tend to, it's easy to forget that energy is not only about how you provide electricity to households, but it's also about, you know, transport and the huge fleets of cars and trucks and buses that we have on our roads. And they also need huge amount of energy to run. How do we decarbonize that? So, 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 so it's really um, uh, good to, to, to take the wider perspective from time to time. Um, we also like that the book had a really long time frame, so, so it looked at, at, at about 200 years of, of, of the development of the process, uh, and this was already covered by, by, by the first group, uh, and, and we didn't read the, the, the chapter on the historical background, obviously, but we, we still got a sense of it from the introduction, and we thought it was really interesting how the author framed the, the overall development of the process, so at first, uh, the problems were that were seen were qualitative ones. So, 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 so the main issue that people people um, people saw was one of disorganization on on streets, and and the streets were messy and, and not regulated enough. And then, of course, the the um, solution was to have better regulations, to better better education, to promote better uh, behavior on streets. And then, from 1990s, it was it was more and more narrowly quantitative perception of the problem. So it's just a matter of, of, of we're going to have more cars on the roads and we don't have enough space for them. So it just we have to build more roads for cars and that's it. So that was a really interesting, interesting um, uh, thing to read. Um, and the author um, introduced a lot of um, notions. Uh, one that was already talked about was the notion of technopolitical constellation, and then there was the regime of concession, and, and uh, in the chapter that we specifically had to read, there was the notion of infrastructure scape, but not only infrastructure, but, but the infrastructure scape in the sense how infrastructure shapes the way uh, mobility is, is, is uh, uh, not only mobility practices, but also the perception that people have of mobility. So it's it's not only it doesn't only have a technological function, but only so also social and political and cultural. And we 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 thought that these notions are, are really uh, well. These are really well tied up with uh, themes of our course. That these are really relational notions. So the author really looks at how 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 these social, cultural, political, and technological processes come together and, and, and what are the relationships between these processes and these, these sort of actors. Um, so I think it's really, uh, we thought it was really uh, relevant to the themes of our course. And, and to talk about um, in a little more detail about the notion of infrastructure scape, um, um, it was interesting to read how, how the author thought that, that, that the way in infrastructure has been developed in Bengaluru, it's not primarily to serve the function of, of mobility or transport, but it's mainly perhaps to serve a political function. So he talked about how infrastructure is part of this sort of political spectacle, or, or, or it's mainly a political tool to gather votes from the elites. And, and, um, uh, and it's also a, a part of this material legacy of the politicians so that Future generations can 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 look at it and 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 uh, remind them of their great leaders, you know. Uh, and it's also tied with the issue of of uh, of of the political leaders wanting to sort of imitate or emulate uh, Western models and sort of import these Western plans and and directly implement these in in, in a really different context. 
And this, this obviously brings about a whole range of other issues tied with colonization and, and, and so on. Mm. Um, but there were also things that we, we uh, um, more or less uh, um, found worthy of, of, of criticizing, uh, especially tied to these notions. So the author introduces all of these new concepts and notions, but they're, they're not, not really new. I mean, th this can be tied, tied to uh, previous research, uh, previous authors that have used this concept, but, they are, but uh, Kopa Kumar doesn't really mention them, doesn't really refer to them. For example, the notion of constellation, it was used by Matthew Gandhi, who talked about urban constellations, and there was Roger Keel, who talked about suburban constellations. And it's also really similar to what Gregory Anru um, wrote about these techno institutional complexes uh, um, and how these lead to path dependency, and this in turn leads to this techno institutional lock in. Uh, so, 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 but, but, but these, these themes are not mentioned in the book. Mm. And the notion of regime. Um, uh, Frank Hales had a really interesting case study, a really popular case study on the transition from horse-drawn carriages to, to automobiles in the USA and how, where he explicitly focuses on the, on the formation of the regime, the automobility regime. So, so uh, it, it was a little bit unclear uh, what, what the Copa Kumar's book adds to these, these case studies. Um, and and to, to, to think of the notion of infrastructure scape, um, um, we found that this is tied to 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 Howard's paper on on uh, on the different modes of governance in cities and especially the infrastructural governance. So how infrastructure is 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 used to 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 shape the city and to shape people's lives. And and we also found a really interesting article by Howard where he uses the notion of carbon scape. So these. Uh, social and material landscapes of oil, which is in a sense really similar to, to the notion of infrastructure scape. But, but, but the, the, the interesting difference was that Kopa Kumaris finds that, that the infrastructure scape is something really, really solid and really this sort of locked in. So there's no, there's really very little change embedded in the, in the, in the infrastructure, whereas Albert uh, and and, and uh, in his article, they viewed the carbon scape as this really unsta unstable and fluid thing that uh, this can be uh, steered in different directions. So 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 uh, we, we thought that it would have been interesting to 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 for the author to refer to this this work and to re to, to relate to this work. You have one minute left. Yeah yeah, and and the final thing we we wanted to mention is that we were. A little bit unclear about what the target audience of the of the book is. So um, I think usually these kinds of, kind of books are meant for a wider audience beyond academia. But then again, uh, the book is really heavy in academic jargon and has uh, really complex sentence structures and and it's it, it's quite dense. So to us, it seemed that it it might be not that accessible to 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 a wider audience. Uh, um, so. Yeah, we, we, it was a little bit unclear to us. And that's all. Oh, thank you, Silver. Um, we can uh, open up for discussion then. Um. I was wondering, um, and I think in particular in relation to your last point about the audience of the book um, and the fact that it, the book is in some ways quite dense and technical in terms of the language. And I was wondering if you could reflect maybe a bit on how, what you feel about the methodology and whether the methodology speaks more to a academic audience or um, or, or more as a as a kind of storytelling for for um, beyond the academic audience. Maybe someone else can answer. I've been talking too much already. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, Silver, for presenting our review, and thank you for the question, Katinka. I think it's I think it 
after reading the um, answers to our review, I think that question can be seen from there as well. Um, that there was questions about how, what kind of uh, consequences there are that that that, uh, that he uses uh, qualitative or views the con uh, congestion, for example, in a qualitative way. And and I have a social science background, so I think it's always very hard to try to argue why uh, why we need qualitative studies because to me it's so obvious. Um, I don't know if if anyone else has a different opinion. Maybe Hassan uh, from an engineer background. Because I know Kopa Kumbar, I was uh, Kopa Kumar, I was reading about his background, and I guess he is an engineer as well. Um, and that might be, I was reflecting, could that be one of the reasons why the methodology isn't uh, opened up as much as some of us would have wanted to have more, uh, more, op more transparency around, uh, around how many interviews or, or exactly or more specifics around uh, participant observations for example does anyone else have any reflections on this uh, to me it seems that it's also the matter of of the uh, target audience so so uh, maybe that's why he he didn't um, specifically write that much about the methods uh, uh, in order to, you know, save the uh, <laughs> the lay reader or the the uh, non-academic reader from this, uh, this stuff, which is perhaps not that interesting to them. But uh, yeah. Okay, can I weigh in as an, as an engineer? Sure. Um, yeah, um, as an engineer, I don't think that um, the points of uh, social sciences and how many uh, samples that we interviewed and so on are things that come to our mind uh, uh, firsthand. Um, I, obviously, I didn't read your, your chapter uh, specifically, but uh, my impression of the book was more uh, in the sense that he's writing uh, what he thought about the situation and the implications of it uh, rather than having a scientific methodology um, uh, in, in the social sciences or in the engineering sense. So in both, he, he did not go into the deep details of having a methodology to uh, analyze the situation. Uh, it's rather uh, an overview uh, tying all these uh, disciplines together from his point of view, or this is how I felt it was. Is there anyone else who did their peer review on this, on this uh, essay that has a comment? Yes, I do. Um, I have a question. You you mentioned in your peer review, uh, he uh, the, the author used a um, couple of different uh, borrowed ideas as this technopolitical constellation, this infrastructure scape, carbon scapes. Um, I'm very interested and curious to hear your ideas on what was the intention or what do you think the purpose of the author to 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 use these ideas into his work? I gave, of course, my my personal opinion, and you already read it. But uh, I would like to to have your your comments. I think that's a good question why he uses them so much I don't know <laughs> uh, it could be a way of trying to describe uh, the aspects in his own terms um, what he sees is fit in Bengaluru um, and trying to capture all of the different aspects 
Do you think he was trying to create new knowledge by using them, by compiling to different concepts, uh, mixing them and trying to create a new product, something like that? Well, yeah, you could argue that new concepts are made up to, 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 for us to be able to speak about things that, that we wouldn't be able to, uh, or, or like to, to create a new language to, to refer to things that are you know, sort of hidden. But, but, but then again, you could argue, and, and because I have a background in philosophy, and I've seen this a lot, people sometimes people just want to be original you know to just to invent new words new concepts to to sort of uh, seem uh, seem more creative more original and to sort of uh, leave the impression impression that their work has you know created a lot of new value um, uh, and for for this reason it would have been interesting to to see from him uh, a reflection of how the notions that he came up with are are related to 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 previous work to to other people who have used similar notions but this was kind of missing so um yeah thank you If there are no more immediate uh, questions, then perhaps we can conclude this and move on.